video. Today I'm going to be showing you all the books I read in March. So this will be my March wrap up video. Late as usual, but never mind, better late than never. Sangatsuni saishu no hono yonda wa Ritoru Witcher Academia deba. Se no, sono manga wa tottemo omochurakata. So the first book I read was a manga. This is Little Witch Academia, which was published in 2017. The manga also came out in the same year. The creator is um, someone called Yo Yoshinari, and the artist, the guy that illustrated this, is Keisuke Sato. It's basically about this extremely determined, spirited young girl called Atsuko, or Akko for short, Kagari, um, who has dreams of becoming a witch so that she can follow in the footsteps of her idol shiny chariot so she enrolls in this school for witches called Luna Nova and there she encounters many misadventures and she keeps getting into trouble she's also quite a bad witch um, so all the other girls laugh at her and make fun of her but she's very very determined she's very headstrong and very focused on her goal this is the first volume um, I think there are three volumes in the manga, so it's not very long, it's quite an easy read. I enjoyed this as kind of like a guilty pleasure manga, um, so yeah, I did quite enjoy it. It's quite good for a bit of fun if you're interested, if you're into that sort of thing. This is the first book I read. The next book I read is The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kua. This is a collection of poems. Um, this is the author's second collection of poems, the first being uh, Milk and Honey, if I'm not mistaken. It received quite a good reception. It was published in 2018 by Simon & Schuster Books, and it also won the, good, the Goodreads Award for Poetry, if I'm not mistaken, so it has received quite a lot of uh, accolades and acclaim. These collection of poems celebrate love and femininity and culture. It advocates strength and it, empo it empowers women, and particularly the culture focuses on the it's Punjabi heritage so it's very culturally rich in that aspect. I did really enjoy these poems. There are some quotes that I loved so much I put them on my Instagram stories. Um, so yeah as a whole I really enjoyed this book. I think she has a really good eye for imagery. The only reason why I didn't rate it five stars is because I felt like there were some poems that were being told in quite a mundane way where it was a bit like I was reading articles of arbitrary facts so that those poems I feel like they lacked the poeticism of the other poems and that's that's the only reason why I didn't rate it as highly as I could have done but otherwise a highly recommended read. Next we have The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz which was published in 1999 by Amber Allen Publishing in the States. This was actually my Secret Santa present that I received last year in December and which I've only gotten around to reading now. So this book talks about what's known as the Toltec teachings which is a school of thought or a, a way of teaching that is indigenous to southern parts of Mexico and basically that teaching speaks about how we can find uh, happiness um, by expressing love. That's the general focus of the book and in so doing gain the mastery over love. I did find there to be moments of gold in this book but overall I had to write it off as just a convoluted self-gratifying mess which sounds horrible but the way the book starts it kind of makes it sound like the teachings that it's going to share are so mystic, so rare that it had to be guarded for hundreds of years until the people were ready and then you read it and it's just a bunch of truisms that whilst true it's not anything that other people don't know already don't get me wrong like I said there were moments of gold but as a whole I just felt like it built up these teachings so much that it ultimately felt anticlimactic. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the audiobooks that I listened to in the month of March. The first being A Pale View of Hills by Kazuo Ishiguro, which was published in 1982 by Faber and Faber Books. This audiobook, it's not very long, it's only about six hours if I'm not mistaken, so it's not very long. Um, it can be easily listened to in a few days. This book makes for more mature, quiet reading. There's not very much that happens in the plot and even then the plot moves very slowly. It's basically about a middle-aged Japanese woman 
uh, who's moved to live in the country in England and one day her daughter from London comes to visit her and that visit triggers her to reminisce about certain events that occurred in Nagasaki in Japan during the war uh, where she's originally from. So mostly throughout this book she's reminiscing about um, life in Nagasaki in Japan, in particular one of her neighbours, a friend who has this very peculiar estranged relationship with her daughter and how that reflects upon the protagonist, Etsuko, uh, her relationship with her first daughter who committed suicide. So it's mainly her just reflecting, it's, it was a very reflective listen. Um, I did appreciate the poetic irony that the book speaks about but altogether it was a forgettable read that I can't really recommend because it didn't really leave any lasting impression on me. The next book I listened to was Milkman by Anna Burns. This is a book that I decided to listen to purely because of the hype that it was garnering all over social media. Milkman was published in 2018 by Faber and Faber Books. Also in the same year it won the Man Booker Prize and the following year it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize of Fiction. The audiobook was narrated by Brid Brennan who did an excellent job. However the audiobook is about 14 hours long so it's quite a long listen especially for people who aren't big fans of audiobooks. I would really not recommend listening to this book. So it's basically about a 17 year old girl who lives in a very closed community in Northern Ireland. It's set during the 1970s during all the political problems between um, Northern Ireland and England there was a lot of tensions between the two countries so that's the backdrop and then you have this 17 year old girl who's being harassed by this very mysterious character known in the neighborhood as the milkman obviously this book has a lot of political import which is why it has received such um, a positive response but I feel like it went a bit too, too much overboard with the political aspect. It literally analysed everything, and I do mean everything, under a political microscope. Everything was dissected to its political significance to the point where it became extremely exhaustive. There was one part in the book where she's talking to the milkman um, before she encounters him she stumbles upon this cat's head and she wants to dispose of it in some way but she doesn't know how so she's carrying this cat's head and while she's carrying this cat's head and walking with it the milkman comes along they have an exchange and that exchange is literally spread out over three chapters whilst every exchange is looked at from its political meaning so from that vantage point it made the audiobook extremely hard to listen to so I unfortunately on my Goodreads rated it quite lowly um, but yeah that was the next book I read and the last two books we're going to talk about are the best books that I've read in March. The first one being The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. It's about a tea boy in Afghanistan during the war. That is about the extent of my knowledge. So this book was originally published in 2003. Here I have the 10th anniversary edition which was published in 2018 by Bloomsbury Publishing. This book was on the New York Times bestseller list for upwards of two years if I'm not mistaken um, and it's received such a positive response but also this book is very controversial it discusses themes that some readers might find upsetting for example um, sexual abuse and things like that um, so it's very gritty it's very raw in its portrayals of the darker themes that it expands upon it's basically um, set in Afghanistan during the Soviet occupation of the 70s and also it covers the time frame of the Taliban occupation at the turn of the century and this is the setting where we have two young boys who have grown up together like brothers. They both come from different social classes. So you have Amir, the main character, um, whose father is quite wealthy, owns a really big grand home um, and then the other boy Hassan is almost like the slave but the two boys they love each other like brothers they've grown up like brothers they're drawn together by their shared love of um, flying kites and running kites but despite their closeness 
the fact that they come from two different social classes almost causes like a strain between the relationship. Um, more so, this pertains to Amir, who is from more of a superior class than Hassan. Hassan is extremely loyal, loves Amir deeply. He is such an endearing character. I absolutely loved his character. Um, yeah, he's, he's such a loyal friend. And Hassan doesn't always, sorry, not Hassan, Amir doesn't always reciprocate this. And so it leads to like um, this path of guilt that he goes down on and the need for him to seek redemption. And I won't say much more than that. But I feel like the themes that it discusses, like um, fatherhood and redemption, um, and things like that is done extremely well. I feel like it did live up to all the hype and the acclaim that I heard about prior to reading it. I will always personally, you know, favour A Thousand Splendid Sons over this book, but otherwise a fantastic read. Um, Khaled Hosseini is quickly becoming one of my favourite authors and of course I have to recommend this book, it is amazing. And finally we have the last book I read in March and also the best book. This was my favourite book that I read in March and that is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. This was published in 1997. It also won the Booker Prize of the same year. I forgot who the publishers were but I will make some sort of indication of that. Oh I just checked it was Flamingo Books. It was published in 1997 by Flamingo Books. So this book is set in India in a place called Corella during the 1960s and it's also set in Corella. Does anyone know where Corella is? And it's about um, a pair of twins um, called Esthappen who's the boy and Rahel the girl and it basically is a story of these young twins. I think there are about seven or eight in this story where most of the events occur and it discusses their life in light of the death of their cousin Sophie who comes to visit them with their mother from England and while she's there something really tragic befalls her. So the book starts off with Sophie's funeral so at the beginning we know that she's going to die and then all the events afterwards leading up to her death it's almost like dramatic irony um, so we know about her death before it occurs and the book just basically speaks about the events leading up to it. Um, I've heard that this book has been criticised for the lack of chronology because the events are not always told in chronological order. It's kind of what happens is revealed gradually via different timestamps if you will and I've heard it criticised for that but I actually think it was engineered perfectly. I absolutely love this book. It was provocative, poetic, it was it made me yeah it was just it was just so good. I cannot fault this book. The vividness of the setting and the imagery was done so amazingly well. I absolutely cannot fault this book. I loved it so much and I had to give it five stars on my Goodreads. So in the month of March, I managed to read seven books, which for me is an accomplishment. I managed uh, two audiobooks um, and one non-fiction, so really pleased with that. I had a very strong reading month in March. Those are all the books that I read. If you've read any of them, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video as always. If you liked it and you'd like to see more videos about books and all things books related, please don't forget to like and subscribe.